Good evening, everyone. This is John Locke from Locking Your Success, and this is the October 13th, 2013 edition of the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Update. Before we get going, we would like to remind you that this presentation is for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors, and we're not making specific trade recommendations. Also, the risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Any trades and or results in the presentation may or may not be live trades. In the event they were computer simulated trades, we do the best we can to make sure that they were represented as accurately as possible. And if you're watching this on YouTube or on the SMB site, please come on over to lockinyoursuccess.com and join our mailing list. And make sure to check out our Rock M3 and Bearish Butterfly video series. All right, let's take a look at the markets. We were saying last week we expected the markets to be bullish, even though we were kind of in a sideways trend at the time. However, we were also noting that the uh, arguing going over on in Washington could create some volatility or some surprise down moves. What we had early in the week is a fairly harsh down move, and like virtually every other time the market went down this year, we it's been like a springboard and it blasted to the upside as soon as the pressure looked even looked like it was coming off. So all we really did in the Russell here is we sold down to our primary uh, trend line and all it took was a little bit of relief and whew, we had, uh, you know, this was a fairly harsh 50 point down move and boom, 50 more points right back up again. So, you know, what's this mean for our trades, as you'll see, is that our longer term November trades, it meant virtually nothing. For our October V Condor, it really meant nothing. For our October Bearish Butterfly Rock and M3 trades, however, we decided to cover the downside to be responsible with our position, and we paid dearly for that with this bounce, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of go over that a little bit later. You know, when you have uh, trades that are taking risk on at both sides and you're close to expiration and you get this kind of a whipsaw it's uh, it's kind of tough on them so we, we'll take a look at those when we get going but as far as where we go from here we are more or less bullish if we get any sort of resolution here we do expect this to continue up to the back side of this trend line before we're either running sideways and backing off i am still expecting a 1090 ish uh, close for the month and if we do that, I think this is the fourth or fifth month in a row that we've actually called the closing number for the month, which has been pretty good. It didn't get there the way we expected. We expected it to come up and then come down into here. But uh, it's interesting that uh, we've been calling this so well. So uh, as far as what to expect for the coming week, we're going to be completely news-driven. If they don't come to some resolution then obviously we're coming down. Whether we hold these support levels, we'll have to wait and see, but we'll probably break trend line if we don't get some sort of a resolution by the end of the week. In the event we do, then we'll more likely be up in this range. So that's what I have for the Russell. If you take a look at the SPX, and we'll just kind of review what happened. This pretty much did the same thing. And you know, we pulled down to, if you take a, a trend line from here to here, and kind of put a channel in, and ignore this little capitulation here into the support level, then, then we came right down to our trend line. And again, we're heading right towards our target for the month, which I'm fairly sure will be in this range as long, like I said, as long as we uh, make a resolution. And on the NDX, same thing. We came down, tested support, blasted off. And on the Dow, came right down to our primary trend line here that we've had in here. So weekly primary, and we blasted to the upside. So everything's looking very bullish. Even though the Dow has gone into a sideways trend, the SPX looks like it's kind of going to a sideways trend. The Russell and the NDX are still up. As a matter of fact, if you didn't notice, we put in an all-time high weekly close for the Russell. So very, very bullish out there, and the Russell seems to be leading the way here. All right, let's take a look at our trades. Let's start off with the simple stuff. Let's just go to our November bearish butterfly. This is the trade we're supposed to be covering in detail this month. However, we don't have much detail because really we've done absolutely nothing to this. This pullback tent down to 1030 didn't hit any downside triggers at all. And this bounce didn't hit any upside triggers. What I love about this trade is it can take, especially early in a trade, it can take this kind of volatility and 
it's just no problem at all. So this is where we're sitting. We continue to sit in the 1050 position. We have an add point up at the 1090. We'll probably hit a delta theta roll before we get there and more than likely be in the 1070, 1090 towards the end of the week. But like I said, if the market comes down, then that won't happen. And our other November trade is in November, the November V Condor, which I believe I forgot to mention last week, but it didn't have any adjustments anyway. So this position has just continued to sit here. Like I said, we pulled all the way back down to almost 1030. We shot back up to here. We're in the middle of the position. It really has been no problem whatsoever. Not gaining a whole lot of value, but it is doing fine. If we sink back down into here again, we'll probably start raising the center of this. Otherwise, I just assume keep it because, like I said, our, our, our opinion is still uh, up here to 1090 and higher for November. So that being the case, we'll look really nice if we close up here. And that's, it. that's all we have on for November at this point. If we shoot over to our October trades, we can start with the October V Condor, which got one adjustment this week, and it was only to pull the straddle out. So if you look at our T-log on Tuesday around noontime, the market was coming down fairly hard. It was just, I was concerned it was just going to sit in the center of our straddle and, and sit there. So uh, actually, I think it was a strangle at the time. So I just, no, I guess it was still a straddle. They were both at 1030. So I pulled the 1030 call and the 1030 put. The position now is just this great big condor. Not, I wasn't terribly concerned down here at 1030. We were right in the middle of the position. We would need an absolute massacre of the market to even be concerned here. And we would need a very impressive up move to be concerned to the upside. We did get a very impressive up move, but the reality is, these uh, really harsh moves last 50 or 60 points, and they die out for a couple days. So we may come a little bit higher into the 1090s, and we'll probably die out for a couple days before we go higher. So this will probably expire worthless. We shall see. If it gives us too much pressure to the upside, we can just exit. But as for right now, no real concerns here. And let's take a look at the trades that got all the action last week. We will start with our rock trade. Here is our rock position back on Tuesday at 11.30 prior to any adjustments. We were in a nice cat condor, and the market continued to go down, so we decided to roll back into an M3R where we take our 1040s down to 1020 and take out some of our 1100s and go into a, a add a call. So that position, once that's done, looks like this right here. And this is our M3R position. From here, we are more or less hoping the market continues to grind down into this area. We, by the end of the day, we started to, we did start to get uh, climb a little bit of delta in here. Being this close to expiration, I am concerned about this hole a little bit. So I did add some verticals in here towards the end of the day, just to give myself a little support here in case the market took off the other day, the other way. Of course, on Wednesday it continued down into this area here, but on Thursday. It took off to the upside. So if I go to Thursday at 10:30, we blast it into the other direction. We're almost theta negative. We're vega positive here. We are way up into our hole. And again, the being this close to expiration, I didn't want to stay here. Although I may have been better off to do so because we end up actually coming all the way up here to 10:87, and and um, it would have been better off to wait. However, I chose not to. What I chose to do basically is to roll these butterflies a little bit forward and put this into a position that looks like this here. Let's just scoot up to 130 and you'll see how I ended up rolling the position up into here, hoping the market would settle out after that really hard update. And of course that didn't happen. The market continued up. So on Friday I made some more adjustments and you'll see it's just a case of, if you look at our T-log here, on Friday, it was just a case of adding three 1,100 butterflies to get our uh, theta up and correct our delta. So if we come to the end of the day on Friday, and this is what we look like as of right now. So we're currently down about $1,700. If the market chills out, this should be able to take a small profit. I didn't play this month particularly well. 
but it's uh, it's pretty unlikely we're going to take too much of a hammer. I mean, if the market crashes down really hard, we may lose to the downside or crashes up. But we've already had a majority of the up move. You know, we make it another 10 points or so. And if we do that, I should be able to hold this okay till 1100 maybe even a little bit higher. But getting this close to expiration, it's going to be hard to make any money past these shorts. If the move is too aggressive, it's going to knock us out. So as of right now, this is where the, uh, where the rock trade stands. And again, this is a little off guidelines. I would have been a little bit better off staying with those guidelines, but uh, you know, who knew the bounce was going to be that big? And if we go over to our October M3 trade, we'll kind of give you a round rundown of that. This here back on Tuesday morning looked very nice. We're up to half profit target. It really looked like a fairly easy profit target month here, because things were going fairly well and the market was fairly stable. However, with the really hard down move, I didn't have time to play with this a whole lot. So instead of rolling back, which I believe I would have been better off rolling back, as the guidelines just basically suggest, another way to, to deal with this is just to simply buy some of these puts back. So I did start buying these puts back, which worked fairly well to the downside. And if you look at our T-log here, you can see on the 8th, I'm just kind of buying them back one at a time as the market's coming down. And we bought, what, one, two, three of these back by the end of the day. So if we come to the end of the day, we lost some money, but we're looking like this. And all we're doing is we're controlling our delta on the downside here. And then on, t on Wednesday, when the market continued down, I believe it was towards the end of the day on Tuesday, which would be the 9th. Oh, I guess it was in the middle of the day. I did two more. Uh, I did two 10, 20, 10, 50 verticals just to kick the tent back a little bit up in here and help a little bit more to the downside because the market was coming down so hard and we weren't sure if we were coming into a resolution. However, I was aware we were at a support level, so I did, I did keep relatively uh, negative del uh, positive delta here. So if we come to the end of Wednesday... Here's what our position looked like. If the market crashed fairly hard, we still had some decent room to the downside. And the upside didn't look terrible. Uh, in, in hindsight, yeah, I probably would have been better off, better off rolling back and then keeping the upside risk-free. But, uh, you know, we didn't do that. So Thursday, in comes the bounce. And I started buying... 1070, 1080 verticals, and then right towards the end of the day, I started into the 1080, 1090s. So you'll see by the end of the day on Thursday, we're sitting in this position here. Again, I am up, well, over 2,000, so I'm not quite at 5%. I'm still looking, to 10, looking for 10%. I want the, the market to you know, provide our 10% return here. And of course, you know, we're looking fine right now, but the extra 10 points on Friday really beat the heck out of us. And I ended up rolling more of these 1080s to 1090. So if we come to the end of the day on Friday, with that 12-point gain, you can see we rolled some more of these up to here. We are 109 delta negative, and I decided to hold that negative 109 delta into the weekend. I figured most of the up move is done. I could be wrong. You know, we may shoot up uh, higher than this, but uh, I'm hoping we may be back off for a while tomorrow. I'll probably pop out of this if I can get over 2,000. And really, if the market settles, that's very possible because, uh, you know, theoretically on Monday, um, we should be up at the $2,500 level, although we know that usually doesn't happen, especially if there's a lot of uncertainty, they'll, they'll depress this, but I may be able to get over 2000 and just kind of crank out of this and move on to November. And that is this trade. And last but not least is the bearish butterfly, fully scaled in, getting whipped back and forth, 50-point whips, very resilient trade. But, you know, I stayed on top of the market, and we just got beat to heck last week. So... All we did with a bearish butterfly, if we come back to Tuesday in the morning, we almost had this back to break even. We weren't doing bad at all. Had a couple, If a couple days settled out, we would have been at a low profit target. We would, have, we would have been able to take it off. Of course, with the hard down move, we just did regular into expiration guidelines where we scaled out of these 1100s, started scaling into the 1030s, 
and we're able to stay with the down move. So if you come all the way, I'll just show you the T-log really quickly, but I'm just going to kind of go over the positions by at the end of each day. Right, lots of moves here, lots of moves. I'm just gradually pulling out of the lower, the higher upper butterflies going back into the lower butterflies. All day, essentially all day on Tuesday, downside adjustments, downside adjustments. And then on Wednesday, that continued because the market kept going. On Thursday, we reversed, had to go the other way. And on Friday, we continued up, had to go the other way. So if we go to the end of Tuesday, and we'll just go to 1630 because we had some adjustments after uh, after closing hours. But this is basically what the down move on Tuesday did to us. We, you can see we scaled out of the uppers, and we're all the way back into here now. And on by the end of the day, Wednesday, right, we're down about five grand. We closed at 250 positive delta, and here we sit. All we needed was for the market to chill out for a little bit, and like I said, didn't happen. Go to the end of Thursday. You'll notice we scaled out of the 1040s. We're back into the 1080s and starting into the um, the other butterflies. So if we come to here, here's our position. Actually, we're not all out, we're not all the way out of the 1040s yet. We're still in a couple 1040s. We got. Our 1060s are gone, our 1080s are here, and then on Friday, of course, the rest of these 1040s went, and the, uh, the 1100 started coming in. So if we take a look at the end of the day on Friday, we are up 12 at this point. We're down about 6700 with that huge whipsaw, and this is the position we're in now. So what's it going to take? It's just going to take the market. If we back down a little bit and... We chill out for probably just a day or two, assuming they let up on the volatility. Then it's very possible we can get this profitable. If we get this profitable, I probably just assume be out with the indecision in Washington, because that can send us uh, quite a ways one way or the other if uh, if they may actually make a decision at, this, at some point. And that is all our positions that we have. Let's hope for a calm couple of days so that we can make something of these October trades. And I'll let you know how we made out at the next week's update. Thank you and good night.